Hello, and welcome to the Mind Grow Radio Show. I'm your host, Stephanie Kathan, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into a topic that we all struggle with, fear. On today's show, I'm sitting down with Susan Palmer Wood to talk about ways to move through that fear and come out on the other side. Susan is a Master Neuro Linguistic Program Hypnosis and Mental Release Practitioner, a certified NLP trainer, Reiki Master, and a certified holistic health coach with training in integrative medicine coaching. Based in Seattle and with a global practice, Susan offers powerful breakthrough sessions and helps her clients start living as their most curious, connected, and conscious self. Once addicted to her own not-enoughness, she spent decades on a quest to attain wisdom and knowledge and purpose through workshops and certifications and personal development trainings, only to wake up and realize that just like Dorothy, she had the power within her all along. So please help me welcome the fabulous Susan Palmer Wood. Welcome, Susan. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much. It's really great to be here and connect with you. Oh, I just love talking to you. I have to tell you, you're one of my favorite people to deep dive into mind-growing conversations with because I feel like every time that we connect, I'm always, it's like opens up a creative portal or something. I'm always inspired Mm. after and I always get, um, goosebumpy feelings, so I really appreciate you coming on the show today and talking about fear. I mean, we all struggle with this thing, and Mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't look like fear. It's hard to recognize. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to talk about with you is the many faces of fear. Can we dive into that for a little bit? Absolutely. (sighs) You know, the interesting thing about the many faces of fear is that we kind of kid ourselves or trip ourselves up by calling it something other than what it is. So, for example, stress is our society's fancy way of saying, I'm scared. Think about a time when you are stressed out. Why would you be stressed out? unless there was a fear of something that you don't want to have happen, right? Like, Mm -hmm. but but stress is just our socially acceptable term. Like, I'm so stressed out. I'm so stressed out. Well, really think about that. Why are you stressed out? What is the fear behind that? And it could be things like um, fear of lack of control. It could be um, trying to cover up imposter syndrome. Uh, fear of failure, mm. fear of success. Um, you know, if it, it can look like an inability to make decisions, over planning, being controlling, worrying, escaping. You know, we have different escape mechanisms because oftentimes we don't want to sit with our fear or our stress or our anxiety. And anxiety is so common. So that's another word that's I don't want to say gaining popularity, but something that we hear so often, stress and anxiety. And what I say about anxiety is it's often future tripping in a way that you don't want to have happen. Right. But Mm. think about something, right? Think about something that you're really feeling anxiety about. Well, it's a fear that something in the future is going to turn out in a way that you don't want to have it happen. So, so what true. would it be? Oh. Right? <laughs> it's like future tripping is not a good way. And, the, and in all of this, it's really understanding that we are creating it inside of ourselves. And I have so many examples and stories about this. And I also want to say that there are, that fear is, we are designed biologically to have fear. Like fear could be a really good thing. It keeps us safe. It could keep us safe, right? Like when, when way back when we were designed to either fight, flight, or freeze, and that was to stay alive. Now there are times when being afraid or fearful really serves us. 
You know, we may not go in a dark alley at night alone, right? That's smart. <laughs> we need that kind right. of fear, right? We don't want to get hurt, so we don't run in traffic. We don't run on the freeway, maybe. Um, there's, you know, I, um, there were many years where as a child I lived in a abusive home. Well, changing my mindset about fear wouldn't have served me. And yet, so that fear mechanism meant play small, don't speak up, be invisible. But what happens is, while that served me then, as a 49-year-old woman, if I still employed the same strategies of being small and quiet and invisible, that wouldn't serve me anymore. And so there's often so many times when we forget that we're no longer in that situation, but we have these root beliefs that are driving our behaviors in a way that no longer serves us. And so I can talk later about some of the tools that I use and that I've personally experienced to break through the, the, the self-limiting beliefs and the trapped emotions of fear. So I just want to recognize Ooh, that, yes, the, yes. <laughs> right? There's such a broad spectrum of fear and anxiety and, and fear that serves a purpose and fear that doesn't, you know, it's, um, so, but for this one, not for this one, for this conversation, so we'll talk about the broad spectrum, but I want to start out by talking about how we often, so when we're not talking about safety issues, we are creating the emotions of fear inside of ourselves. So if we're creating the emotions um, of fear and anxiety inside of ourselves, that means that we can create something different. And that's really powerful to remember that we are not our thoughts, we are the thinker of our thoughts. And something that's and please just jump in. I'm like so excited <laughs> to talk to you about this because it's so prevalent. We think we're stuck with phobias, like phobia is another fear that you don't have to live with. Um, so Tony Robbins talks about, he tells this great story at Unleash the Power Within about how fear, like the body doesn't know the difference between fear and anxiety and excitement. So there, it actually feels the same in the body, but we label it as stress and anxiety, right? So um, Tony talks about how Carly Simon, you remember Carly Simon, you're so vain. Oh, yeah. Singer. Yeah. 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 To, we're totally dating ourselves. But anyway, <laughs> when she, she suffered from a lot I'm of I'm like, remember anxiety. her. I just listened to her yesterday. <laughs> Did you? That's awesome. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> Um, that she used to have all of this anxiety before she would go out on stage. And what it would look like is she would say, oh, my God, my, my heart is beating so fast. It's pounding outside of my chest. My stomach is, is nervous. It's turning. I think I'm going to throw up. My palms are sweaty. I, I can't think straight. Um, I can't remember what I'm going to sing. I'm breaking down and breaking down. I can't go on. And she would actually cancel right before going on stage sometimes. And, and then he went and he talked with Bruce Springsteen. And Bruce Springsteen would say, yeah, before I would go on, my heart would beat so hard and pound outside of my chest. And I would get nerves in my stomach. And it was like I was going to throw up. And my palms would get sweaty. And I, I would forget what I was going to say. And that's how I knew I was alive. And that's how I knew I was doing exactly what I needed to do. So it's the perception, wow. right? And I personally have used this, and I've shared this <clears throat> with some of my clients. One time, um, one of my very first speaking engagements, I was pretty nervous about it. And I just decided that I wanted to do public speaking, and so I needed to change my relationship to how I was thinking about it. Because every time I would think about the speaking engagement coming up, like a week in advance or two weeks in advance, I would get really nervous. I would freak myself out. I would start to get a headache because my body's response to fear is to shut down. And so I would get really nervous. And instead, I would say, no, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And then I would just move on. Like I would take a deep breath, 
I would get oxygen in my body because we tend to hold our breath when we're scared or in stress. I would breathe. And then I would, um, yeah, say I want to do this. And I would remind myself that I want to do this. And then I would prepare. And then I would freak myself out, go, oh, my God, I can't do this. And then I would say, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I just kept having that incantation to tell myself, this is something I want to do. Thank you, fear. I totally get it. I'm scared shitless. Like, what if I fail? What if they laugh at me? What if I forget what I'm going to say? What if I don't know enough? Who am I to do this? Like, who the hell am I to talk about, to tell my story, to give advice to any of, you know, those stories? And I would say, no, I am meant to do this. I want to do this. And I did that so often that by the time the day of that talk, I woke up and I had a Stuart Little moment. Do you remember in the movie when it was the day that they were going to adopt the little mouse, Stuart Little, and the kid says, it's today, it's today. And I woke up that morning and I said, it's today, it's today. And I was so excited. And the song, I'm so excited, was playing in my head. And I thought, oh, this shit works. That was crazy. <laughs> wow. I'm going to be using that because one of yeah. the things that I struggle with when I think about speaking, I have a thing coming up on the 28th. And I'm going to be talking about um, the opioid crisis and stuff. I'm going to be addressing a community event. And I, when I just think about it, I break out into a sweat. So mm. I'm going to be using your <laughs> incantation mm -hmm. um, yeah. right up into that because I think that's really going to help me shift that around. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I would love um, to do an exercise at the end to, and walk you through ooh. it to help you with that as well and that the, your listeners can also benefit from, if that's okay with you. Yay, that sounds fabulous. Yeah. I'm all in for that. Um, one of the things, we just talked about how many faces that fear really has, right? But it's mm -hmm. all that one core issue, the fear of, of discomfort in some way, mm -hmm. right, where either you're going to be hungry or you're going to be home, mm -hmm. homeless was my thing years ago, was my fear and mm -hmm. despair. Was, I was always afraid that I was at the door of homelessness. It was always kind of a struggle. Um, mm -hmm. But when I got right down to it, it was that fear of discomfort somewhere. Mm -hmm. We don't like to be uncomfortable at all. Mm -hmm. And when we are stepping out into the unknown, that's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm not I wasn't afraid of the of the poverty because I knew how to navigate that. But you mm -hmm. you tipped on something that fear of success, like mm -hmm. that whole fear of um, of people coming at you with like the who are you thing. I was very mm -hmm. fearful of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's got a ton of faces, but how do you recognize when you're navigating through life? Like, how do you recognize those things for what they truly are under the mask of what they're representing? So awareness is key. Oh, my gosh. is the key to almost everything, right? So the thing that came forward for me when you were talking about that is the discomfort and, and wanting to stay the same in who we are um, is, is safe and yet that stunts our growth, right? And so mm. um, it's challenging our identity because we identify with this belief that we have, this belief uh, that um, – I can't, I can't trust myself. I might fail. They might laugh at me. But the really the root ones are the – because if you keep going down and, and, and really understand what's at the root of it, it's that I'm not enough. I'm not safe. I can't handle it. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. So those are – and I will die. Like, and I won't be lovable. Okay, and what happens if you're not lovable? I'll, I'll die. And that's just from the very beginning because if we're not in our tribe, if we're not loved and we're left out in the elements and we're exposed, then we're susceptible and we die, right? The saber tooth tiger mm -hmm. will eat us. So that's like a deep, deep thing, which is why this mental emotional release work that I do to release these self-limiting beliefs and these trapped energies of, of fear um, is so powerful so that you can actually 
see more clearly. So how do you recognize them? I guess if we, if homeostasis, if, if when we're, I'm going to say this with the most respect and self-compassion, we are meant to feel good. And so when we don't feel good and believe that, believe that we are meant to feel good and experience the whole range of emotions. Like, I don't believe that I'm going to be singing zippity-doo-dah 24-7. That's not realistic. And quite frankly, that would be boring to me because I like variety. So (laughs) emotions, right? Like, I need a little stress in my life to motivate me, to challenge me. I love to problem solve. I love personal growth. Well, with that comes challenges. And so emotions are great. And when you're experiencing them for a sustained period of time, if you're not feeling happy or self-love or self-compassion or the ability to handle situations, that's when you go into inquiry. That's when you start to, 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 to ask yourself questions. And it doesn't really matter if it's fear or sadness or hurt or, but, but identify what it is. And it's often love or fear. Like those are the two big ones. And then there's the continuum, but you're either in love or in fear most of the time, right? Because even anger covers up sadness and sadness covers up fear. And fear covers up guilt. So it's a really deep, deep candy, a really deep-seated fear. And then there's also the games that we play mentally based on our our limiting beliefs. So just becoming a wow. does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, because what I what I see is like the life just coming at us so fast, disguised as so many things, like how do you know what is real fear? You talked about um the fear that we get that saves us and the and mm-hmm. the fear that we have that is just a disguise for something else. That it's mm-hmm. really that mm-hmm. not enoughness that you were just talking about, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because we're all afraid of not enough of something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mind right? growing. Because You're such I'm, a mind grower. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm afraid of the situation, you know, I was just talking with a, with a client um, a little bit ago about what do you need to believe about yourself in order to know you can handle it? And it's like, Well, okay, I didn't say in order to handle it because that was the answer. But it was, you know, what do you need to believe about yourself in order to navigate the situation? And it was, I need to believe that no matter what happens, I can trust myself and I can figure it out. And I have, I'm resourceful. I can figure it out. And so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of the not enough. So one of the exercises, um, that can be really helpful in looking at fear is, you know, what is the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen? And what's the absolute best thing that can happen, right? And just, I'm a big journaler. I like to get it out, but some people are auditory, and so they can just verbalize it to themselves, you know, or to a trusted friend. So I like mm-hmm. to write it out. And then with it, when it's what's the worst thing that can happen, how likely is that to happen? First of all, just get real with yourself because we, we can catastrophize, right? But, but how likely is the absolute worst going to happen? And then let's say it does. What are three things that you could do if that happens? And then you start thinking about that. And then that starts to reduce your fear and anxiety about it because you're already creating a plan. So then you write it down and then you focus, right? And then you focus on what it is that you do want. And you put your energy, your vibration, and your focus on what it is that you do want because your reticular activating system in your brain will start to look for what you're focusing on. And we, you know, we create reality. We create our realities. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Right. So I had to tell myself, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. So write out your plan, what you would do. Oh, I can handle this. Or I do know who to reach out to. Or I do know where the local shelter is. Or whatever it is. And this is where I want to go. This is the best case scenario. This is where my focus is. That exercise really shifts from, it takes you from that fear vibration 
and shifts you into solution oriented vibration. I love that. I love that. And it's a very subtle shift. Nicely done. I love that exercise. I'm so glad that um, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm practical. So I do mindset and empowerment coaching, and I do energy work. And we need a blend of both. We need practical and energetic things, right, to do, because we have this brain that goes all the time. So um, that one was a big game changer for me, too. I love that exercise. And you mentioned um, that you were you wanted to share some tips from your own personal growth toolbox. Yeah. I would love to go through that right now, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. yeah. So the one that is really helpful in anxiety and fear. So let's talk about the um, the talk that you have coming up on the twenty eighth. Mm, so what? Yeah. You, what? You, so what you can do. And people, I don't know how, we don't have a whole lot of time, so people can please reach out to me at um, com, and, and I'm happy to share more tips. So what you would do is we all have a timeline. So what that means is that we st- our unconscious mind stores um, memories in chronological order, both in the future and in the past. So if you were to imagine where your past is directionally where would you point like where's your past where is my path yeah um to to where i'm going my path is um toward well-being toward inspiration toward um well, let me ask you a different way and, yeah okay yeah yeah, so what I mean to imply by a timeline is I'm going to have you float above your timeline. So if you could think of a timeline as a straight line, right, that connects from your future to your past or from your past to your future. And so if I was to say, okay, when I think about my future, what direction is this line? For me, it's directly in front of me. That's where my future is. And my past is directly behind me. For some people, their future is to the left and their past is to the right. So when you think about right, your timeline and the location of your past and your future, where would you point to your past? So my past is behind me. Is behind um, you. Okay. And where's your future? My future is like right Right in front of me, right directly, yeah. I'm facing it. And where is the present moment? Um, the present moment, I'm feeling right in my center heart. Like when you said that, I imagined a big red light beating, like my heart light lit up. Yeah, That's where my present is. Yeah, so you and I have the same directional timeline. And so if you'll notice from where you pointed, there's a straight line, right, from – from right in yes. front of you to where you're at to the past. So what you can do is, so the way that we feel about events in the future actually shape how we feel in the present moment. So when you can change your perception of that future event, you actually change how you feel now. And so if you were to close your eyes and you were to float up above your timeline and go out into the future and be high enough above your timeline to where you feel safe, And go all the way out into the future until you're right above that event, that speaking engagement about the opioid opioid crisis, and be hovering above it and look down. And now I want you to go 15 minutes after the successful completion of that talk. And I want you to imagine it happening better than you could have possibly imagined. Because remember, this is your mind. This is your mind. You get to see it any way you want to. Now, your 15 minutes after the successful completion of your talk, turn around on your timeline and face now. As you face that event, which is on its way to now, but you face this event, I want you to see it, hear it, feel it, and celebrate it. 
happening better than you could have ever imagined. Imagine it happening so successfully. And just feel that success. Feel that pride. It feel feels good really feel. good. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's now lock whoa. that in. Yes. Lock that in. Touch your earlobe. Squeeze it as you feel, see, and hear it happening so successfully 15 minutes afterwards. See yourself celebrating it. Feels so good. You are so meant to do this. Wow. It now, literally changes mm-hmm. the way that mm-hmm. I felt. Mm-hmm. There, There isn't any fear because when I looked in the future, people were smiling and thankful for the information and shaking hands and um, mm-hmm. asking for more information. Oh, man, it was just like yeah. I wasn't expecting to go there. But when I went there, <laughs> I really liked what I saw. Right, because you get to create it. So that's amazing, Stephanie. And so as you lock that in, and I want you to bring that empowered feeling back to you so that you're inspired to take the actions needed to make that happen and just know that that's in you and that's part of you and see it as done. And then float all the way back to now, taking those good feelings with you. Wow. (laughs) Listeners, I highly recommend that you give that a try for yourself because you can, you can conform that exercise that we just did right into your own situations Mm -hmm. and give that a try because holy moly, Mm -hmm. it's a mind growing experience and you actually feel it in the cells of your body as you're doing Mm -hmm. that exercise. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much. I can't believe yeah. our time is up already. Every time I talk I to you, it goes by so fast. So can it you zooms. let people know where to, where to find you and where to learn more about you and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I'm at Susan Palmer Wood on all the social media, <laughs> um, Facebook and Instagram and my website is also susanpalmerwood.com, and I'm also at susanpalmerwood at gmail.com, and that's Susan, S-U-S-A-N, Palmer, P-A-L-M-E-R, Wood, W-O-O-D, which I guess is also in the show notes, so (laughs) that's me, but oh my gosh, Stephanie, I know, our time together just flies, and I just feel on top of the world. I love talking to you. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and for letting me walk you through that. I feel so good for you, so that is future tripping in a way you want to future trip. (laughs) Yeah, seriously, I love it, and I'm so grateful because now I feel, I feel a value already. That's the crazy thing. Like, I already feel like I'm of value. So thank you so much for that. That is a priceless. Yay. um, I'm jumping up and down for you because you are of value. (laughs) Yay. I'm so glad you see it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Wow. We have been joined today by the most fabulous Susan Palmer Wood. Please go check her out. She has so much to share. She's one of my favorite people, and she will be one of yours, too. I am your host, Stephanie Kaplan, and we will see you next time on the next episode of the Mind Grow Radio Show. Bye-bye, everybody. 